half million dollar church in the deal. The reason we're still here is because people before us were able to flex with that change. Mm -hmm. When you cannot adjust to change, that's, that's when the it's end. dangerous. These are drawings of what the new Riverside Baptist Church will look like. The pastor says it's about bringing the past with you instead of living in it. We brought stone from the original church. But the past hasn't always been kind to this congregation because they've been here before almost 60 years ago. Urban renewal, it almost crippled them. The government tore down the original Fifth Baptist Church, forcing them to find a new home. They had a thousand members in 1957. You know how many members they had when they opened this church in 1968? 35. All those people were thrown out, displaced from Southwest. So we know this happens. I'm not sure how to prevent it. Southwest looked like Capitol Hill. They lined up the bulldozers and leveled everything. Don Denton, our realtor, says what makes this new development different than urban renewal is that private companies are driving the change. It's going to work or they'll be bankrupt. So while more homes and businesses are being built on the new Southwest Wharf, those swanky condos with big price tags are simply out of reach for many. I'm, my goodness, I've never seen so many construction cranes in my life. Remember David White? Well, Southwest is not what he remembers, but he wants to move back, even though this change was the reason he had to leave in the first place. Good for the Washington economy, bad for a lot of its residents because they're going to have to do like I did if they haven't done so already and move further out. A big part of the Southwest waterfront is the country's oldest open air fish market. We tried talking to some of the business owners, but they tell us they're suing the city claiming all of this progress is pushing them out. We reached out to the developer, P.N. Hoffman, to weigh in on this story, and we're still waiting to hear back. Delia Gonsalves, WUSA 9. If you're planning to check out the wharf in Southwest tomorrow, traffic is going to be a mess. So think about Metro or the new free Southwest shuttle bus service. And of course, if you're headed there, you may also need an umbrella. Yeah, it didn't rain for three weeks straight. But now, now you're going to get it all. We, huh? we have a streak going. So, yeah, yellow weather alert tomorrow. Nothing heavy. That's the good news. But I think an umbrella and a jacket is probably a good idea. Ah. Only in the 60s tomorrow. All right. Let's talk about the three degree guarantee, shall we? Thought we might do okay today. Thought we might even hit a bullseye. It's possible. Went for a high of 74, 75. That's not bad. Now, tomorrow we're going to go for a high of 67. It may, in fact, end up being a high at midnight tonight, which may be 69, but we're going to go 67. I would dress for the mid and upper 60s tomorrow. All right. Live look outside at 67 right now. That's good. Humidity is 100%. It's still rather, uh, rather uncomfortable. And here's the uh, latest radar over the last hour. Here's our line of showers. A couple of thunderstorms pushing through the metro area. They're crossing over 270 now. They're going to cross over 95 in the next hour, hour and a half. And again, some heavy downpours. Nothing severe right now, but heavy rain from Reston to Chantilly, just to the west of Manassas, straddling I-66. And we're looking at uh, some pretty heavy rain up toward Olney and up toward Germantown as you go north of Rockville on 270. All this is headed off to the east northeast. So on our storm tracker, Bethesda, here about the end of the show, about 1131. Uh, College Park, a little bit before uh, midnight and in Bowie around 1230 tonight. And you might even hear the rumble of thunder as it rolls through overnight. So bus stop temp 60s. It'll be damp. Nothing crazy heavy tomorrow at the bus stop, but you'll re it'll require an umbrella and a little patience, I think. Uh, yellow weather alert tomorrow. Showers and drizzle. And then Friday's a possible yellow weather alert. The more I look at data, I think it's pretty much a given right now with more rain and showers. High school football looks wet. I think yellow weather alert is a pretty good uh, bet. But this has not changed. Warmer and dry for the weekend. 80s are going to return. Probably about 80 on Saturday. And Check this out, mid-80s by Sunday. So a pair of 67s tomorrow and Friday, which isn't that far off of average. Our average high is 70. Then we're back to 80 on Saturday, mid-80s on Sunday for the game, and then 72 next Monday as another front comes through and cools us off. So by 8.30 in the morning, heavy activity now well south of us, but still some residual showers with temps low to mid-60s. And then by 1 o'clock, walking to lunch, I mean, you can take your chances, but you probably should take an umbrella. I mean, it's just not going to be heavy, but a lot of stuff around. Low to mid 60s still, and then by evening, coming home, some roads will be wet, with temp temperatures still in the low to mid 60s. They really don't go up much tomorrow. So 60s across the board. In fact, they go down a little bit. 65 at 11 o'clock and 65 at 1 o'clock. Now, on Friday, 